do you focus on when you're putting together a puzzle? Maybe you look for the edge pieces so you can mark the boundaries of the picture. Maybe you grab one piece at a time and try over and over to match it up so that it makes sense. Maybe you get stuck on that missing piece and can't move on until you fix it. Maybe you avoid that one section you know is going to be super hard. Or maybe you lose patience because it's taking so long to see the big picture. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? Sometimes our lives can feel like one big confusing puzzle. You've got one piece here and another over here and they don't make sense. Like how could they even be a part of the same picture? You've got big frustrating gaps and you just can't see where it's all going. But that's where hope comes in. Even when we don't see how it all fits together, God does. In fact, God has promised that he is working all things together for good for those who love him. Every single thing in your life has a place. Even that really weird piece fits somewhere. Yes. And even if your life feels like this right now, in the end, God will make everything right. We'll see how even the most confusing pieces fit together to form something amazing and beautiful. And because we know that God can see the big picture and is always at work, we know hope is alive. And when we choose hope, even in the darkest moments, others can see God at work. That's why hope is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. When the night is darkest and I feel weary, I'm not alone, cause you are
Oh, good for life. Hey, everyone. My name is Jacob. Hey, question for you. Who likes puzzles? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know I do. <laughs> I like all kinds of puzzles. Jigsaw puzzles and Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles. Oh, those little pieces of metal that get all stuck together and you have to spend hours twisting them apart. Yes! I love puzzles. Every single puzzle has a solution, no matter how challenging. Puzzles remind me of hope. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. You see, sometimes life can feel like a puzzle, kind of like you're trapped in a maze. But when you have hope, you know that there's always gonna be a way out. Got it, Jacob, woo! Or what if you've got so many problems that you feel like you're underwater? Well, hope reminds you to just keep swimming. And then there are those problems that just seem impossible to figure out, like this bottle puzzle right here. The object of this puzzle is to get the ball into the neck of the bottle. Problem is, there always seems to be something in the way. I've been trying, <laughs> this is fun, to get this one, no, oh, almost there, solved for like 10 years. No, come on, and then go. <gasps> Maybe this one is impossible. In today's story, we'll hear about two sisters and their brother who found themselves in a situation that seemed impossible. So they called on Jesus, who didn't do what they expected. I bet this bottle wouldn't expect if I got a hammer right now. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 11, verses 1. Through 45. Though Jesus had no home of his own when he began to travel and teach, there were a few places that he frequently stayed at. One was the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, come in, come in. We want to hear everything. Stay as long as you like. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived in the town of Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem. But the last time that Jesus had been in Jerusalem, it didn't end so well with the religious leaders. My sheep listened to my voice. My Father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. I and the Father are one. He just claimed to be God. What an evil thing to say. The leaders actually picked up stones, threatening to kill Jesus. Jesus knew this was not the time to confront them, so he and his friends left and crossed over the Jordan River. While they were gone, Lazarus became very sick. I, I just need to lie down. Oh, he's burning up. We need cool water. I'll sit with him tonight. But Lazarus didn't get better. He became more and more feverish and restless. So hot. Mary and Martha became so worried about their brother that they sent a messenger after Jesus. After a long journey, the messenger finally reached Jesus and his friends. Martha and Mary say, Lord, the one you love is sick. Jesus turned to his friends. This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. God's son will receive glory because of it. Perhaps Jesus' friends thought he would just heal Lazarus from a distance, but two days later, Jesus told his friends. Lazarus is dead. Wait, what? For your benefit, I am glad I was not there. 
Now you will believe. But let us go to him. Even though the religious leaders had tried to kill Jesus in Jerusalem, he chose to return for the sake of his friend. When Jesus and his friends at last neared Bethany, they were quickly spotted by the men and women who would come to comfort Lazarus' sisters. Martha, Mary, Jesus is here. If only he had come earlier. I have got some things to say to him. Martha leapt up and ran to meet Jesus outside the village. Lord, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you anything you ask for. Your brother will rise again. I know. When people are raised from the dead on the last day. Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even if they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is supposed to come. Jesus nodded and looked past her. Where is Mary? Martha raced back to get her sister. Uh, the teacher is here. He's asking for you. Mary couldn't stop her tears, but she got up and hurried to meet Jesus, followed by her family and friends. When she reached him, she fell at his feet. Lord, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her tears and the deep grief of the others around her, and his own spirit became very sad. Where have you put him? Come and see, Lord. As Jesus followed the crowd, his deep sadness overflowed into tears, and everyone noticed. See how much he loved Lazarus? Maybe. I mean, he made a blind man see. Couldn't he have showed up sooner and kept Lazarus from dying? Soon, the group reached the cave where Lazarus' body had been laid. A large rock blocked the entrance. Take away the stone. But Lord, he's been in there four days. By now, uh, there's a bad smell. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory? Martha swallowed hard and nodded to several of the men standing nearby. Go ahead. The men braced themselves and shoved hard against the stone. The wide mouth of the cave gaped open. Jesus stood in front of it and then looked up to heaven. Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. I said it so they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus bent down and called loudly into the tomb. Lazarus, come out. For a moment, they heard nothing. And then, impossibly, they heard rustling. Lazarus stumbled out of the cave. Lazarus! Lazarus's face and body were still wrapped in strips of linen, but he was very much alive. Take off the burial clothes and let him go. Swiftly, Lazarus' friends and family unwrapped the strips of linen. Ah, uh, where am I? Jesus? Mary and Martha hugged their brother, laughing and crying. You're alive! You died. Jesus brought you back to life. Many of the people who had come to comfort Mary and Martha saw the incredible thing that Jesus has done. And so, they believed in him. Oh, okay. When Jesus found out that his friend Lazarus was dying, he said, this sickness will not end in death. And he was right, wasn't he? When Lazarus died, it wasn't the end. After four days, God brought Lazarus back from the dead. Yes! Woo! And because of that, we can know just how powerful God is. God made something good come out of something bad. And you know what? God can still do that today. He may not bring someone back from the dead exactly. But when something bad happens to you or the world, God can help make something good come from it. When you're having a hard time with a subject in school, it may feel like a maze. But God can help you stick with it and learn from the experience. When you have problems at home or in your family, 
They can get so bad that you feel like you're underwater. But remember that a very powerful God is with you through whatever you're going through. For us, a problem may seem like it's impossible, but for God, the solution is simple. Got it. Here's the one thing to remember today. Whatever happens, remember how powerful God is. Whatever happens, God is so powerful, he can make good come from bad. You may not see or understand how God is working, but you've seen how God has worked in the past, so you know you can trust God no matter what. I guess I'll have to move on to a different puzzle now that I've solved this one. Oh my goodness! I, no, I can do it again. No, just wait, just wait. Now that I've solved this one! Hold on. Solve this one! Okay, <laughs> you saw me do it now. You saw Jacob do it. Jake, come on, Jake, come on. Come on. <laughs> Just, uh... Where's that hammer? 